What up? Welcome back to Timeless Steel Garage. So, you guys saw this in the last episode, right? This is the wife's 64 Riviera. Uh, I cheated and got one that was really nice. But, it does need some stuff. I mean, this is, uh, my plan is to make this so that my wife can throw my daughter in there and take it on a drive whenever she wants. So there's a few things that I've discovered. The rear track bar is, uh, the bushings are shot. Power steering pump consumed all of its power steering fluid on that drive in the last video. Uh, it's four wheel drums, which I'm gonna convert to front discs in this video. And uh, I'm gonna give Holly Sniper a try. I'm skeptical. Never been a big fan of Hokey EFI, but people are telling me these have come a long way. Good news is, if it sucks, I've got a brand new rebuilt factory carter for a 425 or a 401 nail head sitting on the shelf so I can rip it all back off and throw it back to being a carb. But the main goal of this episode is to install a Willwood front disc brake conversion for a 63 to 65 Buick Riviera. Um, I'm not going crazy with this because I have to get this thing. I'm going on a, we're taking it on a road trip for our anniversary in three weeks. Um, so I'm keeping it a single pot, you know, uh, brake master and, and all that kind of stuff. But I really want to get the front discs on. Right now the master's shot, it's leaking. The right front grabs really bad. Um, and so, I mean, driving it, there was really only three complaints. That rear track bar, the brakes, and that power steering pump was, I knew was, was going to need to be replaced. So. Let's get to it. Let's unbox this disc brake kit. Ooh, stickers. What else we got here? Bolt kit bracket to spindle, okay. Looks important. Another bolt kit bracket to spindle. I'm gonna assume this is a caliper. Yep. Looks like they're using their Ultralight Forge series. Oh, well, either way, significant upgrade. I'm not even sure that these, to be honest with you, Buick drums stop really well so I'm not sure that we'll notice braking improvement with this kit but it sure will be easier to service more modern well we got new bearings outer and inner bearings hubcap o-ring okay look like dust covers Washers, these look like spacers of some sort, and then dust cap. Put all that back in here. This looks like a fairly complete kit so far. Imagine this is brake pads. Yep. What do we got here? Caliper bracket. Two caliper brackets. Put you down. Ooh, a piece of wood. A whole disc with hub included. Looks like there's a second one of those in here. What do we got here? Caliper bolt kit. Looks like a spacer that came out of this kit must have fell out. Hopefully we're not missing anything. All right, that looks to be everything. Let's open this one here. This 
this one took a little ride. All right, so it looks like we got two hubs with discs, two brake calipers, caliper mount hardware, caliper hardware, caliper to steering knuckle brackets, um, bearings, seals, and spacers, pads. And then I went ahead and ordered, uh, the factory brake lines don't work with this kit. They give you two options, a 14 inch and a 16 inch. I just went ahead and ordered both because you really can't ever have too many AN3 uh, brake lines laying around. I don't know if these are three or four. I think they're three. Um, but all right, so I got new tires for this as well. I even got a new to me used hubcap coming for this side because this one's messed up. But let's go ahead and get these wheels off start tearing this front brake system apart. Everything's got to come off down to the steering knuckles, so that makes it pretty easy. All right, there she is, steering knuckle. Getting it off is pretty easy. You got two bolts on the back side of the knuckle. You got a brake line, which I just cut because it's rotten anyway. And then uh, you've got this big bolt here. You got two bolts that hold the wheel cylinder on, and then you got this big bolt here that holds the upper side of the dust shield and, and all the spring tension goes against it. That bolt has never been off, and it didn't want to come off. And if you don't want to deal with a torch and all the collateral damage, get yourself a bolt buster or one of these knockoff induction heaters. Man, I got that thing red hot, quenched it with some penetrant, and then it came right off. And then this steering knuckle had so much grease, and if you didn't know, grease gets hard after it gets old. It was not even the shape of a steering knuckle anymore. I had to chisel the grease off. And this thing's going to need a front end rebuild. I mean, all these ball joints and stuff are just... You know, but I can say the owner definitely maintained it, kept them greased. But uh, that'll be a winter project. I don't have time. We've got to get it back on the road for this trip. And then these uh, brake lines, they're not rubbery anymore. And if you didn't know, when a brake line fails when it's rubber, it tends to collapse internally. And if you can't see the hole inside the brake line, that's because it's basically collapsed internally. Uh, the other thing I found was this tall tail trail of a leaky wheel, wheel cylinder. If you're ever having issues bleeding your brakes and you've got a drum vehicle and you can't find leaks, look on the inside of your rims. It's more than likely a, a wheel cylinder. And that wheel cylinder is responsible for pushing the pads out and applying pressure to the drum. That's what's actually doing the stopping. Um, so those being bad is no good. So it definitely needed uh, some brake work. And honestly, not much fluid came out of here. So the master cylinder's leaking. I wasn't planning on doing wheel cylinders in the back, but based off the condition of these, I'm gonna have to, or at least inspect them. So that's pretty good. It only took me about 30 minutes to strip this side down. Um, it comes apart real easy. Take the spindle nut out, that whole drum comes off, take the discs off, take the wheel cylinder off, and then you got the back dust cover. So now we're gonna Rinse, wash, repeat on this side. Okay, would you look at it? All right, so the first step, I'll sh take this back off so you guys can see it. It comes with a long bolt. Now on 64, this is a 64, no shims go behind this bracket. On a 65, there's shims that go behind the bracket here and here. And basically in the instructions, it says to loosen these bolts on this bracket so that you can move it around. And then we're reusing that bolt that was really hard to get out. In fact, let me blow that out. The bolt that was on the spindle for the drums that held all the pressure of the springs and everything, we're reusing that. Um, and it tells, says to Loctite these bolts. For now, I'm just gonna get these in here to show you guys. But you can see this bracket has to be loose for you to be able to start that nut. And in the instructions, it says to make sure there's no debris on the spindle and that this bracket sits completely flush against the back. Then we're gonna go ahead and torque these bolts down. 
and uh, make sure that everything's lined up good and then torque these two down. All these bolts call for Loctite and have specific torque instructions. This is aluminum with captured nuts, so if you over torque it, you will break it. All right, so it says to apply Loctite, I believe red. I already got it on there. It wants us to torque this lower nut to 65 foot-pounds, apply red Loctite, torque this one to 100 foot-pounds of red Loctite, and then it wants us to remove one of these bolts at a time, apply red Loctite, and then torque to 40 foot-pounds. So, All right, next thing it wants us to do is to pack the rear hub bearing with high temp grease. It's not that hard to do. Get yourself a big old thing of grease and just keep working it into the bearing. High the high temp stuff is typically red if you get the good stuff. Just work that bearing around, make sure it's got grease coming out of everywhere. All right, that's pretty good. All right, bearing is installed. And then it says to put the rear seal in. All right. Sometimes you need to take a little piece of wood and tap it flush. All right, now this piece is not used on a 65, but it is on a 64. See, it's got a chamfered edge. It's a bearing spacer, and we want that to go this way, just like that, because it's hard to see, but these spindles taper out. So you want this bearing spacer to obviously be flush up against the backside of the spindle. Next thing we're gonna do is it wants us to Flip over the disc, and now we're going to pack the smaller bearing for the outer portion of the hub, and then we're going to put a seal on that. Okay, here we are, packing the front bearing now. Plenty of grease. Boom. I challenge you to do this without getting grease all over yourself. It gives us new spindle washers, but it does not give us new spindle nuts. dude just bought this girl into the 21st century eh? a colossal fail here don't forget to reconnect your steering linkage to the back side of the knuckle before you put all the stuff on <laughs> there you have it that's how it's supposed to look before you put the disc on now one difference from stock is on stock the nut is actually facing you but with the wheelwood kit they want the head of the bolt to go in this direction and that's because it bolt will hang out too far if you flip it stock direction it'll hit the disc well I consider this to be a fail on Willwood's part that they don't give you a new nut and they don't give you a new cotter fin um, I have both of those but why give me a new washer but not give me a nut or a cotter pin it's just come on Willwood do better all right, now it wants us to tighten this to 60 inch pounds and then back it off one castellation nut while turning the rotor. The result should be zero end play. And I like where that is. I'm not gonna back that off. Just let me see here. Yep, 
if I back it off just a hair, the cotter pin will line up perfectly. All right, one thing I recommend, go to the auto parts store and get yourself one of these uh, cotter pin packs from Dorman. And it's just nice to have in the shop and you'd be surprised how often you need these things. There we go, that one will work. All right, next thing it wants us to do is an O-ring and put the O-ring around the dust cap and then press the dust cap on. So another thing that I'm not a fan of, I don't know why they can't just machine or make a dust cap that fits properly without an O-ring. Um, but really those are my only complaints so far. There we be. And Daniel, if you're watching this, you know these dust caps are my favorite thing. Not. Well, that ain't going anywhere. And now for the exciting part, putting the fancy caliper on, eh? All right, so the calipers are super simple, Willwood style. The, the uh, pads drop in from the top, and they come with mounting hardware and a whole bunch of shims. Now on the instructions, it says to initially install two shims here on both bolts, and it's really not complicated. All you're gonna do is put this on there and then look from the back side of the disc and make sure the disc is centered in there. If it's not, you're gonna add or subtract shims. You just gotta make sure that the shim count on each bolt is the same. And then ultimately when you're done, the bolt head, the, the bolts have to be flush um, with these brackets here, as in they don't stick out from the bracket or you'll hit the disc. So you have to use shims on the back side of the head of the bolt to adjust the length of the bolt as well. I got two shims like it says to start out with per the instructions. And then there's also a washer that goes on the head of the bolt. And honestly, initial assessment is that two shims is going to be perfect. So get this guy on here and see. The pads are really sweet on these Willwood calipers because they drop in from the top. You can change them if it's a track car. Um, you could change them in the pits super easily and where'd that shim go i got a shim down let's grab a new one and a washer on the bolt head now these nuts and bolts aren't tight but you can see how the disc is centered inside the caliper that's what you're going for so i'm going to go ahead and tighten those down and then we'll put the pads in and then this side is done all right, I ended up actually taking a shim out and I went to one shim. And the good thing to do is use the center of the caliper and try to line it up with the center of the disc. And then you just wanna make sure that your bolts don't protrude far enough to impact the disc. So now, these pads on these Willwoods are super simple. Just drop them in. You got a big giant cotter pin goes through the top of the pad and then you just uh, flare the cotter pin on each side on this side bend it and now that's it all we got left on this side to do is install the uh, new brake line all right so there is the new brake line and uh, the easiest way to do this is put this fitting in put that fitting in Tighten the brake line here. I face the 90 degree down. And then check your clearance left and right. Uh, the brake line was a huge pain. I had to get it real hot. And then I still had to use a piece of a pair of vice grips to grab onto enough to break it. So uh, be careful with those brake lines or you'll be putting a new fitting on. And in this car you can see there's not much to work with. I should have named this car Dirt Dauber because there's about 800 Dirt Dauber houses in this thing. So that's one whole side complete. And I'm gonna rinse, wash, repeat on the other side and uh, join you back here when it's time to change the master cylinder. All right, so I just finished the other side and I got the old master cylinder here and a new AC Delco one. So one thing that the Willwood kit calls for, if you maintain the stock OEM single circuit master cylinder, which is what this is, it wants you to remove the residual pressure valve. 
Now, if you've never taken a mastery apart, that's not scary at all. So I've got this taken apart exactly how it comes out. Just be careful not to get dirt in here or pinch these seals. But this is what they're talking about right here. So we're just going to take this out, get rid of it, and put this whole setup back in here. And then all you got to do, once you've done that, is easier said than done, but put this C-clip in the back of the master. Just like that. You just wanna make sure your C-clip is in its groove. And so now we've modified the OEM single circuit master. And we'll go ahead and put that back on. Now, I wanna show you why I'm changing the master and you can see down in there, some of that is spray for me, but if your booster is wet like that, your seals in your master cylinder are bad. So we needed to change it anyway. Uh, and honestly, I recommend that you go to a dual circuit brake system, uh, which I will do on this eventually, but for now I'm just trying to get this system back online. So I will say that uh, the kit went together pretty easy. Here's the other side, done. And the one thing I didn't share with you guys, um, so I brought the two brake line kits. Uh, one was a 16 inch, one was a 14 inch, because I wasn't sure which one I needed. And I actually went with a 14 inch. And the part number on that is Willwood part number 220-7056. It's their flex line kit, 14 inch. 38 by 24 to 90 degree brake lines. They're standard 3AN brake lines. So that's it. There's all that's left. Now I will say that if you're a Riviera person out there going from drums to discs, don't throw those drums away, those aluminum drums. There's somebody out there that wants them, a hot rodder, somebody. So throw them up on Facebook or something and somebody will snatch them up from you. And we'll go ahead and get this new master cylinder installed. And for today, I think that's it. I do have uh, new wheel cylinders for the back drums and I got new brake lines, a new center soft line for the back. I'm gonna go ahead and change out the wheel cylinders, replace that brake line, breathe, bleed the whole system. I got new shoes mounted, new white walls. I'll put this all back together and that's brake system redone online so i'll let you guys know what i think of uh the brakes after i drive it the first time but once we get this buttoned up we're going to move on to the holly efi so thanks for tuning in we'll see you next time <laughs>